It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. My name is Bruce and this is Jenner Custom Toys tonight. No cooking videos, we're gonna talk about resin. Uh, Christmas is coming and my eBay store is getting a little busier and I'm starting to run out of my back stock. So tonight I have to do some casting and I'm like, you know what, why don't I make a quick video um, maybe you can see what I do. Uh, I've done videos in the past and stuff, casting things, molding, casting, you know, whatnot. Uh, tonight I'm going to take you through the entire process of casting a uh, clear resin figure with my reusable molding compound. If you've been following my channel, you'll see that I explain how to do that and uh, uh, what I came up with for a recipe for a reusable molding compound that you can make your figures with clear resin. Um, okay, what... Well, like this. This is what we're making tonight. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to switch cameras and show you closer what we're doing. But that's what we're doing tonight. We're going to make this out of clear resin. And uh, you can apply this method to any other project, really. So let's get started. Okay, so this is what we're making tonight. We are making this, uh, uh, it's a Star Wars figure uh, that I created myself uh, from casting and molding it's something that was never put out so uh, before people flip out about copyright rights and stuff like that it's just a hobby and it's just for fun so anyway I want to show you this is Boba Fett and we're going to make the figure that is in here here he is set him here in front of the camera and you can't really see that one I need a better background ah all right let's try it now nope, same color wow my videos suck don't they but anyway here maybe use the hands this is the figure we are going to make, and this is, as you can see, is clear resin. This used to be a huge seller of mine when they first came out a few years ago. Uh, a lot of people have these in their collections that are friends of mine and stuff like that. So we are going to cast this and mold this. Well, we're going to mold it, then we're going to cast it from step one to step uh, A to Z, so to speak. I, it's been a long time since I've done a resin video, so please bear with me. You see I'm using the old camera setup because... Well, I just thought, you know, it'd be cool. So, the first thing we have to do is we have to get a mold. And the first step in getting a mold is you have to have something to mold. And, of course, here's the original here. Put it under the camera. That is the original 1979 Boba Fett figure. Well, he looks so not used to these cameras. Anyway, it just it's one from my collection. We're going to mold that to start with. And let me get set up for that, and we'll be right back. Okay, um, it's really funny because I haven't done this in a couple months because I started doing a full-time job. I'm running a restaurant again and uh, running the kitchen, and it's I had a bunch of these made up, and I've sold them all. So this is why I have to get back in and make some more. But I'm laughing at myself because I am really uncomfortable doing this. I was, used to, I was comfortable. Now I'm not because I haven't done this in so long. I'm actually forgetting things. But anyway, let's continue, and I hope you bear with me. This is how I do my stuff. So as you can see here, I have my master. It's called a master. It's what I'm going to make a molding of so I can cast this guy. And I actually got the zoom function to work better, so now you can see. The first thing we want to do, and once again, if I hadn't mentioned it, I'm using the reusable molding compound. Now you can see a video on my channel how to make that and how to use it. Um, earlier just go through the uh, resin casting 101 playlist uh, it's it's gonna save you a lot of money especially if you're gonna use the clear resin which is what we're using tonight um, it doesn't work with the white resin don't ask people I said it and said it and said it but people still ask me well what if I use wax what if I use this it doesn't work on anything else but this clear resin everything else heats up and when it heats up it actually melts the reusable molding compound because remember we heat it up in the microwave so, like I said, if you haven't seen the uh, reusable resin, oh, I keep saying that, the reusable molding compound. If you haven't seen my recipe for that or how to, how to make it and how to use it, go back to that video and then come back and visit me now. So, okay. All that set aside, I've said all this before. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to look at our master and we want to, the way we're going to mold it, he's going to be in the mold um, upside down. I'm just going to do this. You already see what it looks like. Upside down. 
we're going to pour through the feet when it's all said and done. So that liquid, and of course somebody texts me while I'm making a movie. Um, so the, when we pour the resin, it's going to start filling up the head. And I always do it upside down because it's much easier to fix the feet than it is to fix the head in almost any action figure or any figure. So it's going to fill up the head. You go, so you got a picture of water filling it up as an empty cup. And where might that water get stuck at? So we go up, 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 up. Still okay, still okay. Okay, there's a problem here because it'll trap air in both arms. So what we want to do is we want to vent. And I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to vent right here and right here at the very tippy top so it doesn't trap any air. I'm going to show you that on this camera here. Get this guy out of here. We're going to vent right here because remember the water's coming up. And if it goes and reaches past here, the water can't get into the leg or to the, to the arms. I'm trying, guys. So I want to vent right across here at the highest point of the hand and the highest point of this gun because it's connected to the hand. And that's where my two points are going to be. Now, I used to use sticks just like this one I'm holding in my hand. I used to use that. I changed it, and I found that using hot glue is a little more effective. So I'm going to, for this figure at least, I mean, maybe if something bigger, you might still want to stick with straws. For this figure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, my own camera, I am going to put a bead of glue here, and I'm going to draw it over to that hand. It's okay if you cover up the hand. I'll have to carve the hand out again whenever we make it. But I found this actually works better. So there, I've got a bead of glue going from the hand to the figure's thigh. And that'll dry. I'm going to do the same thing with the high point here where the gun is. I'm going to put a bead of glue here right through his thigh. Now you try not to use too much, but you just want it to connect. As long as it connects, your air is going to go out and it's going to go right through the feet when you fill this up. Now, uh, set this down, let it dry. As you can see, now if the air comes up and gets stuck here in the arm, it won't get stuck. It'll go through this bead of glue into the leg and out the foot. Same with over here. Now, it does make it touchy whenever you remove it from the mold to get this area because it's such a small area. Even, even if you're just using regular molding compound, it makes this very flimsy. Uh, so it's, it's hard. It takes a little practice to get it right so these pieces stay in there. Or you're going to be doing some work with your Dremel tool to carve that out. There's, I haven't found a way around it. Keep in mind, the reason we use the reusable is we're trying to save money. Sure, I could get the best molding compound on earth and use it, and I wouldn't have this problem. But my all the resin uh, casting videos I've done have been about saving you guys money so and getting decent results. So, yeah, it takes a, it's going to take a little practice. Now, as you can see, the, the glue is pretty well hardened, so I'm good to go. I'm going to make this mold in a red Solo cup, a favorite thing to use. And... All I'm going to do is put a couple drops of glue on both its feet. Do, do, do. Uh, just, yeah, just a couple drops. And I'm going to put him right in the center of the bottom of the cup. Poof. And dogs. It's going to hold him there for a second. Oh, you can't really see my fingers. But trust me, he's there. And I see he's at the bottom of the cup. He's glued there. I'm going to wait about five or ten minutes to make sure all that glue has gotten cool. Because remember, we're going to reheat this. Uh, we're going to heat up this molding compound right here. This is it, by the way. I had it in a few minutes ago, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in again. And uh, so next step is I'm going to heat this up in the microwave, and we're going to mold it. I'll be right back. Hey, come on up. Come here. Say hello to the people. It's Gray's face. <laughs> it's Gray's face. It's Gray's face. See my little shop buddy. See my Gray's face. All right, Daddy's got stuff to do. Okay, I had my uh, molding compound in the microwave for about two minutes, and it came out, and it is way too hot. But, so I wanted to add this section here to let you know um, if it's too hot. That's okay. You're not going to ruin your molding compound. 
but it might ruin your master. So I'm going to let this cool for a little while. And um, yeah, I'm not going to pour it in there until it cools a little bit. So it, it's hard to explain like, oh, maybe I should use a thermometer and figure it out. But it's it's too hot. So we're going to let this sit for a minute and I'll be right back and I'll, we'll pour it and we'll make our mold. So yeah, I let this cool down for a little while. It's been maybe maybe 10 minutes. And it wasn't boiling or anything. I just, I could just tell it was too hot and compared to the plastic. And I really don't want to ruin a vintage toy. So I let it cool down. It's still, it's more viscous. It's thicker to stir. And now I feel confident I can pour it in there without ruining my figure. So let's get rid of this guy here. And all we're going to do, very, very easy. And you can, and, and even if you're using regular molding compounds, so far everything I've told you is about the same, except you're not going to microwave regular molding compound. So we're going to take this guy, and we're going to pour on the side. I'm actually watching through the camera so I can see better. I'm going to pour on the side, not on top of the figure. I'm going to pour on the side. I'm just going to let it naturally come up around my figure. All the way up, I'm going to cover his head up. I'll go about another half inch. This cup's plenty big for it. And you'll see the air bubbles are coming up. That's totally normal. They're supposed to, and they will. Now, there's two things I can do right now. I got a choice. I can leave this sit on my table overnight and cast it tomorrow. Or I could put it in the refrigerator and cast it in as little as an hour and a half. Um, because of that, both bubbles, and I stirred it so much to keep it to cool down, I'm actually going to leave this on my desk tonight overnight. And I'm going to take care of it tomorrow, which you won't know the difference because it's going to happen in the very next scene. But that's all you got to do. Just put it somewhere safe. You can put it in the refrigerator. Actually, we're going to put it in the refrigerator anyway. I'm going to let this cool overnight. And in the morning, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for a little while just to let it solidify a little better. If you're living in cold weather, just put it outside. I have a whole workbench out there that I throw in during the winter. I throw these outside. They're ready in half an hour. But you got to make sure they're nice and cool before you go pour in your resin, which is our next step. So I will see you tomorrow. And, well, I'll see you in like 30 seconds. So here we go. Mold's all set up. Um, Got to be honest with you. It's three days later for me. I ended up getting called into work uh, for the past two days. I was supposed to be off, but I got called into work. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But anyway, what I did, I did what I said I was going to do. I left it on my workbench overnight so all the bubbles would work out. And as you can see over here, um, they're on top. It's nice and nice, nice. It better be nice and solidified by now. It's been three days. And then uh, today, um, because I was going to make sure to make time for this video, I threw it in the refrigerator just to firm it up a little bit more. Um, you want to throw it in the refrigerator for about a half an hour at least. If, if you dry it on your table at room temperature, throw it in your refrigerator when you're getting ready to do the demolding process, which is what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, it just makes it easier. So let's, uh, let's demold this guy and see what we got. Uh, like I said, I use these red solo cups and, uh, I'll just, I'm using a sharp exacto knife, by the way. I usually, when I demold, I usually put in a brand new blade. Uh, it just makes it easier. Uh, using an old blade can just tear the mold and give, like, raggedy edges. So there, I cut around there. I'm just going to peel it like a banana. Throw these in the garbage. Do, 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 do. And there's my mold. Yep, there's my mold. And you can see this is the bottom of it, which is going to be the top when I pour it. And a little tootsie sticking out there. Uh, here's the bottom. You can see the head. Uh, basically, this is it. I think I had the camera zoomed in a little too close, but uh, I'm sure you get the gist of it. Anyway, now is the tedious part. We're going to demold it. Uh, just like regular silicone molds, we're going to demold it the same way. I'm going to take my knife, and uh, like I said, this is an action figure. I'm going to just pull it a little bit away from my base. And I'm going to try to trace, if it has a factory seam in it, try to trace that seam. Like, study your uh, study your model and try to trace the seam. It just comes out with a better casting when it's all said and done. But I'm going to just start cutting down here right against, very carefully against 
my original. It's hard to do this way. I'm used to having it in my face. So I cut a little bit down on one side. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Action figures can be tricky because there, there's spaces between the legs and between the arms and the body. And you want to make sure you get as clean of a cut as you can without tearing it or ripping it. Because if you tear it and rip it, then the resin's going to get in those uh, tears and rips. And it's going to make it funky. Uh, actually, the hardest one is right here between the legs. So I'm going to... Uh, well, you know what? If I screw this up, it doesn't matter. I want you guys to see the, the principle of it. I'm going in on the other side of the leg, on the, in between the legs, and I'm making a clean cut from one to the other. Now I should be able to open that equally. Can you see that? Okay, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. And I'm going to cut down the sides. Once again, being very careful not to tear it, which is why it's important to use a, a uh, sharp knife. Cut it a little bit. I'm going to turn it around. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, tracing his leg. I don't think you can see what I'm doing, but I'm explaining it to you, so hopefully that helps. And then into the middle again to have a nice, clean cut on as close to the seams as I can get it. And if you can see down in there, Lighting's not too, too good. And I am liking this new camera, though. This new camera's a lot clearer than the one I used to use. So I'm getting that little crotch piece right up onto the crotch of the action figure and making sure there's no connection before I go any further. And then I will continue on each side. Now I still have to contend with the hand and the weapon because if you remember, I left the weapon in his hand. I'm going to have to go this way so I can see because this is very tricky. I'm at his hand right now. So I want to go outside and go above, trace along his arm. Which is what I'm trying to do. And I just tore it a little bit. Hopefully that won't mess up my final casting. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I turned it around. This side has the weapon on it. So I'm cutting straight up the side. Of the weapon which you didn't get you don't have to put the weapon in I do because it just makes it easier whenever I'm all done I'm trying to get this all on one side and to be honest with you of course when I'm videotaping it doesn't work out like it does when I'm not hopefully we can salvage this because I don't know at this point I'm going up the arm let me see if you can see here I'm going up the arm to see where I tore it I can't point at it because I'm holding it open. Kind of tore it. I might be able to get by with that. But now I'm carefully cutting between the arm and the body, which is another key point. And uh, to be honest with you, I have messed up a lot of castings by messing up this cut. Oh, you can't see it. I shouldn't have zoomed in so closely. But I want to make sure I have that completely cut on the side between the arm and the body. I'm up to the shoulder on this side. And as you can see, like, like I was saying, right here, I tore it. it. It tore. I'm hoping I can get past it. Hopefully a few rubber bands will take care of that. I tore it on this side too. So this, this one might be a questionable one. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I don't, uh, I don't hide my failures. I'm hoping this isn't a failure at this point, though. So let me take this close and see if I can rep before I screw it up anymore. See if I can get this other arm cut out. So that's the thing about this; it can be frustrating. Which is nice with the reusable molding compound, because even if I do make a mistake, if I totally trash this mold, I could just remold it with the same. Mm. Mr. Bruce done messed it up again. Mm -hmm. I ruined it. See what I did? It tore over here. Apparently, I didn't have it in the refrigerator long enough. And I just ruined my mold. So, um, I'm going to have to start over. But that's okay. I mean, that's why I like this reusable molding compound. 
Yeah, this mold in my hand right now is garbage. It's um, still just cutting it just for the sake of co um, conversation. But uh, yeah, this mold is garbage. So next step, I'm going to go ahead and pour a new mold. I'll skip that in the video. I'm going to go ahead and pour a new mold for this guy. And uh, look at that. I, I just, I annihilated it. And you know what? That's going to happen when you're doing this. Um, am I mad about it? Nah. No, nope, not at all. It's um, it's part of the craft. It's part of the craft. But that's why I like this reusable molding compound because I'm just going to throw this in a microwave, remelt it, make a new mold, and uh, start over. <laughs> I, I am disappointed. I'm not going to lie. Okay, well, without any further ado, let me do what I got to do, and I will be back. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half, maybe two hours almost. Um, I went ahead and I redid the process of molding it, which you saw me molding it the first time. I'm, I didn't bother filming that because I don't want to make this video that long. Um, and I did end up cutting the, the little figure guy out. I, I cut him out of the mold, as you can see right there. Well, there. Um, and I finally, I did get a good mold to use. And you can see I, I cut it like I was explaining. It opens, it opens like a book. And uh, we're going to put it back together. And there he is. I need my masking tape. And guess what? I don't have my masking tape. Hmm. All right. Well, while I'm getting my masking tape, another thing I'm going to do is I'm taking this cup of water. It's about half full. I'm going to throw it in the microwave, and I'm going to heat this up to about, I don't know, 45 seconds, just to get like a, a little hotter than tap water. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So I'm going to get my masking tape, and I'm going to heat this up to above hot water level okay back again i uh, got my stuff straightened out now <laughs> like i said this is not uh an exact science this is not well i guess uh, i mean technically it might be an exact science but i believe in having fun with it a lot of other people do these resin videos and they never make a mistake and they're mr perfect that's good i'm glad you don't make mistakes i guarantee they make mistakes I will just show you my mistakes. Like in the last segment, whenever I showed you, when I was trying to cut up in the mold and I messed it up. Anyway, here's the new mold, and I wrap it in masking tape. Um, you can use rubber bands, but rubber bands tend to um, distort your final casting. So lightly, I like to, this is what I do. doesn't mean it's the exact way to do it. I like to wrap mine lightly in masking tape it holds it together good. The masking tape doesn't, you know, it, it's not hard to get off. So that's what I did. And after I did that, I took my water in this coffee cup here. I put it in the microwave for about a minute. And it's just above, just a hair above uh, the temperature of your normal tap water would be. So now, let me set this aside. Because we're going to use that in a minute. I'm going to show you how. And I'll set the mold aside because we're not even close to that yet. So I've got my, I'm using clear uh, resin. And like I said, this reusable molding compound only uses clear resin. So I'm using the clear resin. Here's my cup that I'm using. Just a standard plastic cup. Um, don't use cups that have wax in them. Uh, like a Dixie cup has wax in it. And if you do what I'm doing, it'll ruin your casting. It'll ruin your resin. Don't do it. This is just a straight plastic cup. And I find that these work best for me. Um, so we'll set that there. So I got my part A and part B mixture for any, any clear cast to do. You can lose aluminite. I don't get paid to endorse anybody. I'm, well, if you really want to know what I'm using right now, it's uh, honestly, it's something cheap I found on eBay. Uh, I believe the brand is Demorex. But um, you can use whatever you want. So what I'm doing now is I'm pouring part A into there to about what I think I need. And because I made so many of these, I know how much I need. So in this case, it's about half of a shot glass. If you can see that, but it doesn't really show you anything. Can't turn it sideways or I'll dump it. So yeah, it's about half a shot glass in each shot glass for what I'm making. Um, here's the part B. We're gonna do the same thing in another shot glass with that. 
And like I said, I just, I know after making so many of these, I know how much to pour. So it might take you a little longer to pour. See, I'm dead on. And that's awesome. Um, it might take you a little longer to figure it out. Uh, so yeah, you just, it's a lot of trial and error. But I happen to get part A, part B. I'm pouring my part A into my cup. Now, when you're using clear resin, it's a little thicker than using a white resin. So when you pour it out of your shot glass, you always have to scrape it. So you want to scrape that shot glass. I'm using a wooden popsicle stick right now, a craft stick, whatever you want to call it, to get as much out of there as possible because you really want this ratio to be perfect 50-50. Uh, that goes for Luminite. That goes for this Demerex that I'm using. You can really screw yourself up. And I found out the hard way. There's one part. I found out the hard way how you can screw yourself up. I was making another action figure about a year or two ago, and I just just did it, you know, half. And I'm like, oh, I'll just do this, 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 this. Well, the mixture was wrong. And when the figure came out, it was clear. It actually looked pretty good. But it was bendy. It never completely hardened. And I still have that. Well, I don't have it in this room. I still have that, but you, I can still bend it. And I'm thinking, eh, that might be an idea for a posable figure for a display or something like that. Because I would bend it and it would stay there. But uh, as far as like, it's probably not what you want to do. Unless you want to experiment with it. If you do experiment with it, leave me a comment. Let me know what it is. All right, so here's the part B. We're going to dump that in there. Now, also, the good thing about the clear resin, I don't have to rush. This stuff takes six, seven hours to dry. To cure, excuse me. So I don't have to rush like I do with the white resin. It takes about 10 minutes to dry. So I can just take my time. I can sit here and tell you guys what I'm doing. And uh, no worries about messing it up. So there, I got both halves in my little cup here. And I'm just I'm just going to mix it. And here's, here's what I do differently than most people do. Let's get these shot glasses out of here. I, when I'm, only when I'm using clear resin, not white resin. I will stir this just a little bit, like uh, maybe about 10 gentle stirs, trying not to put air bubbles into it, just, just to get it sort of mixed. And this is when the water comes in. I'm going to take my water. Let's put it under the camera here. I'm going to take my hot water. And like I said, it's a little above tap water. It's not boiling. Don't boil it. And I'm going to lay my plastic cup in here. And that's going to heat that resin. And it's going to mix a lot better. And it's going to bring a lot of the air bubbles out. So I'm going to leave it sitting here for about five or six minutes. And I'm going to skip ahead. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it sit for about five or six minutes. And that's it. Let me give you a better view on this. Because if I can get this to sit correctly, in five or six minutes, you'll see a difference. You can already see the bubbles starting to pop up. That's the air. Oh, there it goes moving by itself. All right, but you can see the bubbles starting to pop out. So I'll be back in about like five or six minutes. In your mind, it'll be like a second. And it's been about five or six minutes. Remember, we only mixed that halfway. We just wanted to get some heat in there and to get some air bubbles out. And, and actually, it's going to be better to stir now. I'm going to take it out. You'll see, there's not much. Well, you can see some air bubbles in there that are working their way out. I am so bad at working this camera. But if you look down there, you can see the air bubbles. Have yourself a paper towel or a clean rag. Dry the bottom of your cup off. You don't want to get any water in your resin at all. So with that done, now I can grab the bottom of it. And I can see in there, there is a lot of air bubbles in there, but that's okay. I'm going to give a final stir, just very gently around the edges. If you can see how I'm doing here, uh, just around the edges. Now I'm going to take my stick out slowly. Now, if you can see on the stick, I can see, but it's not really showing up. A lot of those air bubbles are stuck to this stick. I'm going to throw this stick away. And I'm going to put it back in the warm water for another minute or two. And we'll fast forward to that. Okay, it's been another two minutes, and this is settled. I've already mixed it completely, so we are ready to pour our mold. Um, as you can see, their air bubbles are very minimal in there. 
it's better to look yeah look through the black there's a, there's a few in there but i'm not really much worried about it so i'm gonna take my cup out i'm going to once again take my dry clean rag dry out the bottom before i touch it this is why i love working with clear resin you could just take your time just take some patience and you can take uh, a lot longer to do it with uh with the clear resin than you can with the white resin white resin frustrates me because i'm always in a hurry Okay, now here's my mold. I'll try to get where it belongs here. And as you can see, I have the, the feet sticking up. I am just going to slowly and carefully pour this into my mold. Now, now remember, the, the guy, this is the guy. And it's going to fill the head up first. It's going to go to the arms. And since I've already vented the hands and the gun, it should be fine. But we're going to do it slowly to make sure we get resin in all the little nooks and crannies otherwise it's just not worth doing now because we warm this resin up in the hot water the consistency has changed and it's going to run a lot thinner than it would if you didn't heat it up with the water which i know i remember whenever i learned that i was so happy because if you don't heat this up like i showed you it will uh just take forever and it doesn't fill up the nooks and crannies and stuff like that now i'm gonna t now i only filled a little bit in there i'm gonna tap it on the table I'm gonna tap it over here little tappy tap tap all i'm doing is oh you can't see it there we go i'm just doing this and what that's doing is picking it to the whole to the whole way to the bottom any air bubbles that might have gotten in there which is unlikely are working their way to the top which since we haven't filled it they can go wherever they want and because this reusable molding is very squeezable, I'm going to give it a couple squeezes. That moves that stuff around in there. And just give it a little squeeze. Not hard. Doesn't have to be hard. Just, just a little squishy ball. And that's going to fill up the head. And if you like, if you look at my model, it's going to fill up the head and that little pointy thing there, which I is invented. So I have to take a little extra time to make sure I get resin in there. And then it's going up to the arms and everything and to the body. So after I do that, I will set this back down and I will continue to pour my resin, fill it the rest of the way up. Like I said, there's not a big rush for it. You don't want to take 20 minutes to do it, but it does give you extra time to just relax and enjoy it. Oh my God, I feel like Bob Ross right now. I'll do some happy little damn trees. Okay, now you see it's almost full and when I do a little squeezers, squeezers <laughs> when i do a little squeezing it pops up i'll do i'll sit here i'll do this about five or six times and that'll work more air bubbles out if there happen to be any which and fortunately this time i did it right sometimes i have had big bubbles come up and that's okay that's why we do this we squeeze it it's pretty much full i'm going to top it off now so that mold is full right now tomorrow morning we're going to see what we got now, I do have some leftover resin, and I don't like wasting resin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find another mold real quick to dump the excess resin in, and I will be right back on that. Okay, uh, another another uh, tip I like to make is always have something around that you can dump excess resin in. Um, you know, even if it doesn't fill, it doesn't matter. You put a little resin in there now. Let, next time you have extra, put a little in there, in there. It's better than throwing it away. My daughter loves these unicorns. So I'm actually just going to pour the uh, excess resin in the in the unicorn. Uh, can't really see it on camera. Let's move this guy. I'm sure you don't even need to see this on camera, but you're going to see it anyway. I'm just going to pour the leftover clear resin in. Oh, I still have more, so let's just start this one over here. Oh, it's enough to fill both of them. See, you never know how much you have left. Right there's two things that... That I was, because I, I poured too much resin for myself. That's why I said you should know how much you're using. Uh, of course I didn't. But anyway, here's my mold. And I'm going to leave this sit overnight at room temperature. And it should be a really nice figure when we're done. Uh, and I will start the video when I demold this tomorrow. Unless I get called into work again. And it might take me three more days. We'll see. So it's been overnight. And I came down today. Did a little cleaning and this guy's dry 
you see. Um, you might be asking, oh, Bruce, why didn't you use the pressure pot that you did the video on? Uh, for these figures, I usually don't have to use the pressure pot. I showed you the method of how to warm the resin up a little bit. Um, plus, I was a little lazy. <laughs> it's been a rough week. So this is without the pressure pot, but it'll still work, as you're going to see. So there's my mold, and I'm a little concerned about this, and some of the... I always get noises when I'm doing a, a, a video. I'm a little concerned the, um, the resin kind of seeped down through and out onto my cardboard, so I... My leg, my feet here are just a little bit shallow. I don't think it's going to be a problem. If it is a problem, I'm going to show you how to fix that. So with, without anything else, let's take our tape, tape off here and see what we got. I'm not going to let tape beat me today. All right, there we go. That's the tape off. And throw in our handy-dandy garbage can. I just spent all day yesterday cleaning this shop. It was a mess. Now I'm getting ready for Halloween, so I'm making a bunch of Halloween stuff. But I want to finish this video. So here we go. Uh, see what we got. Let's start peeling it off. It's a little sticky today. There it goes. There it goes. Do, do, see, popping them out. I'm not much worried about reusing this mold. Um, if I do, I'll microwave it and make a brand new mold. I genuinely try to only use these molds once and okay and besides as you can see under the arms and everything give me a pointer i need a pointer under the arms here it's actually left some of the molding compound in it and of course that's going to come right out some here some there so if i would reuse this mold it's not going to come out very nice so we'll put this back in the recycle bin so we can reuse it and see what we got in the rest of this guy is clean this stuff out I'm just using a piece of wood you can use anything you want I, I try to stay away from metal whenever I'm doing this because wood isn't as hard as the plastic so you tend not to mess up your casting plus every once in a while these aren't completely dry this one seems to be pretty good though I just got to get this out uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this I'm sure you can figure out how to do this yourself get the excess molding compound out from, from it so let me clean this up real quick and I'll be right back Okay, as you can see, I got all the molding compound that was stuck in there. I got it all off from, from the arms here and here. I uh, did it real quick. There's still a piece here that I missed. I'm sure he's not happy about this. But uh, it's, you know, it, and it, it's okay because you can just reuse the mold. I'm going to microwave this again and remold something else with it. That's why I like the reusable molding compound. If, if you use the, uh, the uh, what, what's the um, what's the other brand? The Umu 30 or something like that and you rip your mold like that you, you're done and that's you know that, that can cost money this way it doesn't matter i'm just going to reheat it and make another mold anyway this guy actually did come out better than i thought he would i was worried about the feet uh but as you can see the feet are actually fine and uh, i got a little flaring on there and what i'm going to do is take my exacto knife and just just go down around the contour of the leg cut it off there same with i'm trying to do this backwards so you can see it's not hard, just, you know, back and forth. This guy isn't completely dry yet. He's still a little pliable. Might have taken him out a little early. So I'm actually being careful what I cut into and the pressure. And then we're going to go down in between here, cut the flashing off. It's not uncommon to get flashing on some of these molds. It's, you know, an X-Acto knife or a Dremel tool can take it right off. And uh, ordinarily right now what I would do is take a Dremel tool and outline his feet and get rid of that extra there. But... Since this is still a little soft, I'm going to let that go till later. But up here, you see where the vents are. Here's the hand vent going into the hip. And here's where I did the vent here. It's at the tip of the gun going into his knee. Um, how I get rid of that is just with my trusty Dremel tool right here. It, okay, it won't reach on the camera. Oh, it kind of will. <coughs> but all I'm going to do, I don't know if I can get this on there for you or not. I'm just going to try to do it. I'm just going to trace the contour of the hip on the inside. See, that, that got one of them out. See what I mean about it's pliable? And then I'm going to carve the hand out from basically whatever doesn't belong there is what I'm going to cut out. Yeah, he is rubbery. He needs to dry some more.
same right over here. I'm going to contour the leg first. And that's about it for the breaking of the vents, which, as you can see, this shouldn't do this. He's not quite dry yet. But that's okay. He'll still dry. He's not going to lose his form or anything like that. We're going to let him sit here for a bit and dry. And one thing I did notice, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Right here on his chin. Where are we at? Right here on his chin. There's a little indentation right there. You can barely see it on the camera. A little indentation. It had a little air bubble in there. I'm going to show you how to fix that where you don't have to do a whole new mold and a whole new casting. And while I'm doing that, I'll probably do the feet too. They did come out okay, but there's a little hollow spot in each one. I'm going to show you how to touch up that too. So, But we got to let this guy dry for about another hour. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we got to rewind a little bit now because um, I did the next section. I was grinding this down. I cut the uh, the gun away and you know, did the hand with the Dremel tool. And I was I was sitting there talking to myself. I thought the camera was on, but it wasn't. So I can't go back and do it. So what I'm going to explain to you what I did is I just basically took the Dremel tool to the vent here and the hand here to make try to shape it a little bit better, and just went around took off any burrs, any flashing around the edge just quickly with. Uh, uh, the Dremel tool here with a, with a fine sandpaper on it. And uh, when you're doing that, you don't have to worry too much about scratching it up. And I'm going to show you why here at the end. But I went to, uh, we're going to learn now how to fill in this little air bubble right there. Like I said, there's a little air pocket right there. And it doesn't really make the figure look the way it's supposed to. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's blurry, isn't it? Well, there, maybe you can see it a little bit. It's right there very very small um if you're a perfectionist which i'm not i mean i make these for fun they don't have to be perfect um as nice as i can get them anyway what you're going to do is uh hot glue is your best friend this is a hot glue gun it's a low temperature glue i don't use the high temperature glue because um it can damage what you're working on it'll melt other plastic and it's just not very good so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to do a little test glob to make sure my glue is hot enough which it is and I'm gonna wipe the edge off I don't want to get any excess anywhere and I'm just gonna fill that hole that's all I'm gonna do very carefully put it in that hole if you get a little extra like strings hanging out of it don't worry you can pull them off later and that's all there is to it when this dries you won't see it in fact while I have this here I want to do that do it to the um, bottoms of the feet that I said were a little hollowed out we're gonna fill that right up with hot glue just like where are we at Doo -doo. just like this and what I'll do that you know not only is it gonna look better but that'll reinforce it I'm gonna wait a second before it you know, cools down I don't want it to solidify completely and I'm just gonna push it down with my finger you wait a second so you don't burn yourself and that fills that up great and set this here. For right now, it's done. I'm going to show you what I do to finish it, though. Because a lot of times, well, I'll tell you in the next section. Hold on. Okay, guys, we are almost done. I'm going to show you the last step that I do. And uh, to show how you can get a really nice crystal clear figure like this. Or any other object you might want to make. Um, my, my hot glue is dry. Uh, it's got a few rough edges. That's okay. I'm just going to get a piece of sandpaper. I'm just going to quickly go over anywhere I see anything that I might have missed. A couple gentle, couple gentle rubs with the sandpaper. It, uh, it doesn't have to be too fine of a sandpaper, but you, this I'm using right now, I'm actually using a 60 grit, which I should probably use a higher number, but it's in my hand. I mean, I've done this a million times. All I'm doing is going around the edges, any flashing, any little thing that doesn't belong. I just want to knock that off here. You see there's my chin that I repaired. It looks good. Everything else, oh, I see a part here that needs cut out. I missed that. It's a little spot back here between the neck and this little missile thing. Let's see if I can get that with an exacto knife. Nope, it's too pure. So we go back to the blade. And I can't get it on camera. 
I'm just going to cut it out. When you use the, this kind of resin and you use a grinder on it, it makes a lot of dust. So, mostly what I do is I take it outside. For the most part, I take it outside to my other shop. I have a table out there. And that's where I normally do my grinding. But now you can see how, how white he got just from that powder. Here's how I get the powder off best I can. I'm going to take a clean paintbrush. And I do it do back and forth. Just like that. Easy peasy. Get in there, get every, as much out as I can. All right, aside from that little spot that I just found, and I used my sandpaper, I'm actually ready to go now. Now, we're going to clear coat it. And the reason we clear coat it is it's going to cover up any scratches I left. It's also going to keep the sun from turning this yellow. Because this has a tendency to turn yellow. I used to have an example of an old one, another figure, of course, uh, that turned yellow. So ever since that, I started protecting it from sunlight. And a lot of collectors would be like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't let sunlight into my, my toy room. I'm the same way. There's no windows in my toy room. So I'm just trying to find a way to... Oh, you could put peg holes in the bottom of it. Usually I drill holes, but since I replaced the bottoms with glue, I'm not going to drill the holes in this particular one. So I'm looking for a place to put this stick. Yeah, that'll work. And there he is. I'm just going to use good old-fashioned semi-gloss clear coat. This particular one, I don't endorse any brands. I don't get paid for anything, but if you want to know what this is, it is Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Cover Semi-Gloss Clear. And it's got a UV protectant in it, too. So it's simple. All I'm going to do is give it a spray. Make sure to get all the areas. That's him. I'm just going to let him dry. Next section will be the finale. But for now, I'm going to let him sit there for about 10 minutes and dry. Oh, someone's going to ask me, oh, you need to be in a ventilated area. I am in a ventilated area. In fact, if you can hear in the background, my exhaust fan just kicked on. I've got a fan right, right there around the corner. Big fan going out the window. Sucks all these fumes out. I learned that lesson the hard way when I was working with glue when I first started. Yeah, my wife came home. She wasn't, uh, she wasn't impressed. I mean, I'm weird as it is, but a little weirder from the glue fumes. Anyway, let's let that dry, and I'll show you the final product here. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, and he just barely dried enough, so I want to finish the video. And, uh, well, there he is. Uh, you can see it looks a little clear. I have a piece of black uh, stuff I'm going to put down here. You can see how it shows off how, how clear he is compared to uh, what we started with, if you rewind, you can see it was way different when it came out of the mold. So that's what I mean about the scratches and stuff. The clear coat takes care of that. And it, it'll, this will last. And the good thing about it is um, it's just fun to do. That's what, that's what I started doing this for. Uh, you know, I still have the eBay page. I, have, I dumbed it down a little bit because I'm working full time now. But this particular figure, I have made, um, I'm going to set this guy over here. I have made so many variations on this figure, just customizing, playing around. Um, you know, I'm a big Star Wars fan, obviously. This, these are three figures. You can paint them too. If you don't, if you just want to make them clear, you can make them clear. You can paint them. These are ones that I made out of clear casting, and I painted all of them. That's what the original looked like, and that's the Mandalorian right there. And then there's Boba Fett from the Mandalorian. So, um, I mean, it's endless what you can do with it. You don't have to make them clear. Uh, I do want to say, if you're going to paint them, um, don't clear coat them till the end. So you can paint before you clear coat. I feel like I needed to let you know that. But anyway, that's how to do it. Uh, you know, Halloween's coming. I'm making a lot of Halloween stuff now. I actually made something really neat. Um, some Halloween tea for myself. Yes, it's a denture. It grows. But um, I made these for... I was playing around. I made these. Um, you want to see what they look like? All right, I'm going to cut this part out because you don't want to see me take my teeth out. Okay, and there they are. Can't really see that close, huh? I think it's going to be a good costume. Um, I get you. <laughs> yeah. I'm a 
might just cut that part out altogether. But anyway, resin crafting is just, it's fun. It's fun for me when it was COVID and I stayed home most of the time. I actually quit my job because I didn't want to deal with uh, the mat. There was a lot of fighting about the mass, and, and I'm not even going to say what side I was on. I just didn't want to hear it. So I decided, and I already had the eBay page started, so I decided just to stay and work on that. And I did really, really well for those two years. I'm still doing okay, but I'm back to work full time now, back to what I love to do. I'm cooking again. I'm a chef. But when I get time now as a hobby, I get to enjoy this much more. Like I said, these are going to scare the shit out of somebody for Halloween. Uh, I would put them in, but I'm not taking my dentures out in front of y'all. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, that's basically how to do it end to end from start to finish with uh, the clear resin and my reusable molding compound, which if you don't know what that is, there's another video on my channel with the reusable molding compound and it shows you how to make it, how to use it. I wish you all the luck in the world, and I know it's been a while. I told you I'll do resin videos when I can. Today's that day. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.